The moment the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, registered the signal, something clicked into focus. A gigantic body had just collided with 3I Atlas, the interstellar comet, already causing a stir among astronomers. The observatory's sophisticated instruments caught the sudden flash, the shift in dust trajectory, and the abrupt injection of kinetic energy into the comet's coma. In an instant, what had been a wandering interstellar visitor became the site of an explosive cosmic event, altering what we knew about that object and opening new vistas into how interstellar material behaves under extreme stresses. To grasp the significance of that collision, it helps first to understand 3I Atlas itself. Discovered in mid-2025 by the Atlas Sky Survey, it came barreling into our solar system along a hyperbolic trajectory, an unbound orbit, meaning it will not remain captured by the sun's gravity, but will pass through and depart again. Its speed relative to the sun was already extraordinary, far exceeding typical long-period comets, making it unmistakably interstellar in origin. Webb observed it on August 6th, using NER spec its near-infrared spectrograph, and revealed a coma dominated by carbon dioxide gas, with smaller but measurable amounts of water vapor, carbon monoxide and other volatile species. The CO2 to H2O mixing ratio in its outgassing was unusually high, about 8.1, more extreme than seen in most comets native to our system. Such a composition suggested that 3I Atlas's nucleus had formed under conditions quite different from typical solar system comets. Before the collision event, 3T Atlas was already under intense scrutiny. Its coma extended over vast scales of tens of thousands of kilometers, its dust and gas dance choreographed by solar heating, sublimation, radiation pressure, and outgassing jets. Telescopes around the world and in space had noted subtle asymmetries in its coma. Faint elongations in the sunward direction, and changes in brightness as it approached the sun, but nothing suggested that an impact of colossal proportions was imminent. Then Webb's data told a different story. In the data stream, a new spectral signature appeared, high energy lines and unexpected Doppler shifts, as though a chunk of matter had been suddenly accelerated, heated, and added to the dust and gas envelope. The dust tail geometry shifted. A plume of material shot off in a direction not aligned with the simple sunward, or anti-solar axis. The coma density increased abruptly, followed by a rapid dispersal of newly liberated material. In effect, the collision acted as a trigger, injecting energy, mass, and chaos into a system already in delicate balance. That such a collision could be spotted by Webb is itself remarkable. We're used to telescopes detecting gradual outgassing, solar heating, fragment shedding, or sublimation plumes. But to catch the instantaneous signature of an actual impact, especially on an interstellar visitor, crossing the solar system over months is something new. The collision must have been with a body small enough to elude prior detection, yet massive enough to leave a strong, observable mark. Perhaps a dust aggregate, a small fragment of debris or a micro-asteroid. Any of these hitting, 3i Atlas at relative velocities of tens of kilometers per second would unleash tremendous energy. The collision must have occurred at a juncture when 3i Atlas was already stressed by sublimation. As it neared the sun, Thermal gradients developed inside the nucleus. Some parts heated up more, some remained cold. Cracks opened, volatile pockets developed. That structural fragility increased the likelihood of fracturing or even spontaneous fragmentation. But here an external trigger delivered the spark. The impact would have punched through surface layers, exposing fresh interior material, dislodging dust and generating shockwaves in the nucleus. On the scale of the comet, the collision can be likened to smashing a rock into a semi-frozen snowball. The shock sends out both heat and mechanical waves, driving dust and gas outward, possibly fracturing internal ice layers and accelerating gas flows. One immediate effect is a sudden injection of high-velocity ejector. Some particles would leave at tens to hundreds of meters per second, others at lower speeds, joining the existing coma but with distinctive velocity components. The spectral signatures would carry broadened velocity lines and shifts, betraying the mixture of velocities. Webb's spectrograph would then detect absorption and emission features broadened and shifted relative to the baseline cometary outgassing. That's exactly what analysts noticed. A sudden surge in spectral line widths, 
and new components appearing off the expected velocity. Center. Another effect is the sudden exposure of pristine material, previously insulated from solar heating. The collision would have torn through crusts or dust layers, revealing volatile ices, embedded dust grains and even trapped molecules surviving from the object's origin. These fresh materials could sublimate rapidly, adding new gas species or altering the ratios in the coma. Observers may even spot short-lived radicals or molecular fragments that otherwise would not survive long in sunlight. That burst of newfound gas would contribute to a temporary spike in total coma brightness and gas densities. The spatial morphology of the coma would respond too. The ejector plume would carve wisps, arcs or fan shapes as particles propagate outward. Radiation pressure and solar wind interactions would distort the plume's progression, bending it, dispersing it and mixing it with the existing coma. The collision might create a secondary tail or a side fan, perhaps visible in high spatial resolution imaging. In the immediate aftermath, the dust tail could acquire kinks or aberrations, particles escaping in directions inconsistent with the normal solar pressure vector. The significance of detecting such a collision is profound. It gives us a peek into the processes of small body dynamics in real time, especially under conditions we seldom see. While collisions among asteroids and comets are not unknown, catching one in an interstellar visitor offers a rare laboratory. We can study the response of foreign material, not just solar system ices and dust, to impact stress. It's a direct probe into the mechanical integrity, layering, porosity, and internal structure of 3i Atlas. Given the impact energy, scientists can back out estimates of the impacting body's mass and velocity. Considering relative velocities of multiple kilometers per second, even a modest fragment of tens of meters across could deliver a huge punch. By measuring the injected mass of ejector, its velocity distribution, and its thermal signature, one can infer the density and composition of both the projectile and the impacted region. In turn, that constrains models of the object's mechanical properties, how strong or weak its ice dust mixtures were, and how shock propagation travels through interstellar comet nuclei. Moreover, comparing the pre- and post-collision gas composition reveals changes in volatile layering. If the collision exposes deeper layers rich in gases not otherwise outgassed, we gain insight into how the nucleus is stratified. Perhaps 3i Atlas had volatile reservoirs of exotic molecules suppressed by insulating crusts. The collision might release gas species that gave no signal before, organics, uncommon volatiles, thrisotopic anomalies that help piece together the object's thermal evolution, history, and even its formation environment. We also gain understanding into how interstellar bodies interact with dust and debris fields. The fact that a collision occurred implies that there is material, fragments, dust, micro-rocks, along the path of 3i Atlas. That suggests that interstellar space, or at least the region it passed through, is not entirely empty but seeded with debris, perhaps from prior collisions in its parent system or the galactic background. The trajectory it traversed may have intersected a cloud of small fragments or debris disk remnants. That raises questions about the frequency of such collisions during interstellar transit and whether many objects get altered or catastrophically disrupted long before. They reach another star system. The timing is key. 3i Atlas was already approaching perihelion experiencing increased solar heating and volatile activity. The impact would therefore come during a phase of stress. So the comet's response is non-linear. In other words, the same impact might have negligible effect on a cold, inert object, but on one already thermally activated, the damage is amplified. We now see the interplay of exogenous impacts and endogenous activity, how an object responds when already on the brink of instability. In broader astrophysical terms, this collision detection opens a new window on interstellar small bodies. So far, interstellar objects have been rare. The first Oumuamua was enigmatic and showed no coma. The second, Tui Borisov, behaved more like a comet. 3i Atlas promised to be even richer in information, and now it becomes a collision laboratory. The implications extend to how interstellar objects evolve over their journeys, how likely they are to survive intact across millions or billions of years and how often they might suffer collisions long before entering other systems. Such impacts might actively shape the population of interstellar debris. If many comets traveling through the galaxy are gradually pockmarked, 
shattered or eroded by collisions with dust, micro-asteroids or rogue rocks. Then by the time they reach a star system, many may be fragments or aggregates of what they once were. That means the population we observe could be biased toward more robust survivors. Detecting and analyzing one collision provides calibration, a measure of how much attrition an interstellar body can sustain.